It's the boy Black Bear Mirage. I'm back. What's happening? Major salute. All the people in the Mirage universe. I see y'all. What we're gonna do in this tape is, is um, I'm gonna basically go with some alpha male science because what I want to do is, is basically just is help the brothers out there that that are young, some of the young men out there, you know, and just try to show you guys that um, you gotta make good decisions as a man, and you know, the higher alpha man, the emperor or the conqueror, you know what I'm saying, the man in his higher mind, his higher self, that doesn't perform his animal and his animal lower self. You know, the higher man, he just does things a certain way. Um, and as a man out here or a young man, a teenager or however old you may be, you know, yeah, you are supposed to have fun in life. You're supposed to enjoy yourself um, and you're supposed to get your experiences. But at the same time, you know, it's good to go ahead and mature as early as possible because it's like it's something you're going to have to end up doing one day anyway. So why not go ahead and do it a little early? You know, it's almost like, let's say, doing your homework. Before you got to go outside, you know, you know, you want to go outside. So ain't no point of really prolonging your homework. Might as well go ahead and knock that shit out. So you go outside and do whatever it is you want to do. So, you know, as a man, when you are young, let's say if you if you a teenager, you know, or if you a man and let's say you in your, your 20s, you know, your early 20s, mid 20s or late 20s, you know, you're still a young man. Um, even if you're a man, let's say in your early 30s and mid, mid 30s, I would still say you you somewhat really kind of a young man. But. You know, you, you just have to have a certain level of maturity you're going to have to get to. Um, and the maturity is going to come basically in the challenge between, you know, what your higher purpose is and what your life purpose is. Um, and basically, you know, your your romantic relationships with women and how you use your resources, time and attention. And where you basically put it, you know. Where, where do you put it? You know, are you going to put more attention, let's say, in your romantic life early on? Or are you going to put more more um, attention and time and resources, let's say, in what your life purpose is early on? You know, so it's more so like a thing like that's dealing with relevance. You know, which one do you deem or find to be more important? Um, your romantic life and let's say your interactions with women or let's say your opportunities to um, advance yourself into your higher goals and your higher life purpose. Um, that's kind of what we're talking about here. And, and what I want you all to do, man, is, and this is something also too, you know, Black Bear Mirage ain't perfect. Um, you know, I may get on these tapes and kind of give, you know, not even really advice. I don't even call it advice, man. I'm just kind of telling you, I guess, you know, some little, little words, you know, from my life experiences, basically, and I'm just organizing them. But, you know, but nevertheless, um, what was I saying? Anyway. Point is, is that you young brothers got to just get to the point where you're going to be a young man, but you're going to have a mature mindset. You know, it's going to have to be more of you're going to have to have an old soul or an older mind and in, in, in a younger body. That's that's what I'm getting at. You're going to have to be to be you're going to have to be more of a fourth dimensional thinker, um, you know, four or five dimensional thinker. You know what I'm saying? In your younger years of life. So you're going to have to sacrifice and give up some of your young years of, you know, turning up and doing all this other goofy shit and, and, and so-called, you know, winning and all this other stuff you seeing people your age and, and a little bit younger or a little bit older doing. It's like a lot of that shit in your young years, you're going to have to go ahead and sacrifice and give that up. That's if you're trying to get to the gold. Now, if you want the bronze award, then, 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 then don't do that. You know what I'm saying? You know, if you want the bronze award, then you keep being young. You know what I'm saying? You turn up, you know, you just live the life of a young person and you just naturally get older, you know, and then get serious. Let's say, you know, in your mid thirties and late, late thirties or, you know, forties and stuff like that, you know, kind of what, what most people do. But if you want the gold, the gold award and the diamond award, um, what you're going to do is, is you're going to mature a little bit earlier. OK, now this is something that Blackbeard has done. All right. And I can say that it has accelerated certain things to where, um, although I'm I'm young, but when I meet a lot of people, they say that I seem a lot older and stuff like that, you know. And it's not because of how I look, but more so how I talk, and how I think. Okay, so there must be something to that, you know, of of maturing earlier and in a young age. Now I will also say that there are cons to that because. What will happen is is that you will know a lot at such a young age, but you really won't be. 
you know, older and old enough to really start using a lot of the wisdom you have. And you may not have the resources and stuff like that to start using the wisdom. So you have to kind of wait, you know, so those are that's one of the cons of, of being young and having wisdom. So watch out for that one. Um, but but nevertheless, you know, I, I, I rather you have the wisdom at a young age. OK. So as I was saying, um, you know, a man is going to have to, you know, realize that his, his romantic life, and his love life, you know what I'm saying? And how it feels to be with a woman. You know, it feel real good. You know what I'm saying? And it is something that could, you know, have a lot of your attention, you know, and have you looking over that direction a lot of the time. You know, I can feel you on that. But um, but what we're going to have to do is, is we're going to have to basically balance it out. And we're going to have to always realize that the life goal or the life intent is always going to be more important. And although that it seems that women want us to pay attention to them and, and make everything about them. The paradox to life really is that they don't want you to do that. They want you to pay more attention to your goal and they want you to pay more attention to your higher purpose. OK, and these are alpha women that I'm talking about. All right. So alpha women actually want their men to pay attention to their higher goal and higher purpose. OK, beta females or lesser grade females. They want a man to pay them all the attention. They want to absorb a man's attention, resources all his life, life, light, it, life essence. You know what I'm saying? They want all that. You know, they don't really want their man really focusing on his goals and things that's going to basically build his future. That's going to help him be concrete in his psyche when it comes to his life purpose and his relationship really with his own spirit. They don't really want him investing in that. They want to rob him and basically act as a succubus to, to his, 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 his attention. And they want all of his attention. And because women have, you know, this, um, this squishy, you know, um, you know, <laughs> this squishy box between their legs. Um, they have a pretty good, you know, chance of, of, of seducing a man and getting him to actually give them the attention. So you have a lot of guys out here that will pay the woman more attention than even his goal. So, you know, you're going to have that battle as a man. And that is actually the battle of Satan um, or the temptation of Satan. You know, when Yeshua went into the wilderness with his own shadow. This is ultimately what was going on. Um, when Heru was in the cave, this is what was going on. You know, anytime you see a, a story where the hero basically is in a low stage in his point in his life and he's being challenged by something, um, this is what that is. Or if he's in a high point in his life and everything's going good and he's being tempted, being tempted by, let's say, um, too many luxurious things or too many things that he can indulge in. That this is what's going down. He's being tempted basically by his own um, inner self, ultimately. And he will have to make a decision on what he wants to choose. Because as we all know, a house divided cannot fall. And you cannot serve two gods at the same time. So in one aspect, you know, woman is, is a form of a god. And the reason why is because she can actually, she has the power to command and magnetize man's attention. Let me repeat. Woman is a form of a lesser God because she has the power to magnetize man's attention. OK, she has the power to magnetize man's attention. And this makes her actually a God because the two things that man subconsciously pays his attention to is whether he believes in a God or anything like that. But basically the higher aspect of himself and whatever he feel his life purpose is and his essence and where he comes from on a higher level. He's thinking about that. And and, and that that's including his family because that's all connected to that. But then subconsciously on the other end, he's thinking about a woman or just any kind of a union with a woman. Because the the natural attraction to a woman is going to always be there. You can't fight that. Um, men subconsciously are thinking about being with women. And women subconsciously are thinking about being with men. So, you know, that's not nothing you can fight. So while all this is going on, you know, within the psyche and in the emotional body and in the sexual body of a young Aboriginal man, you know, he needs to be very, very conscious and he needs to be very, very mature in the mind to realize that I need to pay attention more to my goal because this is what the alpha woman wants. And any woman who's really for me, um, she would rather me pay attention to my goal than just her. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to read a little bit out this book called The Way of the Superior Man, of course. Um, the Way of the Superior Man. This is what this is for. 
Also, too, you know, once again, Blackbeard doesn't have any children. But if you men out there listening to these tapes, um, especially if you're listening to this one and you are listening to um, this tape right now, and you have a son, let's say, you know, if you have a young, a young son, you know, or, or you know, a teenage son or whatever it may be, um, you need to tell him about this. You know what I'm saying? And you may need to let him listen to this tape. Um, I don't know if I've been cursing or not, but nevertheless, this may be this may be one of them ones you want to put him on, because what I'm gonna tell you is this is some real shit. If somebody put me on game like this when I was like when I was young, and somebody broke down a lot of this stuff that I be breaking down for you all, like the the way I do it, I really ain't no telling really where I would be right now. You know, it, it really it really wouldn't be. And the only reason I'm saying that is because, you know, if you have a son, like you really should take advantage of this because either you've already told him this before or this or if you're hearing this the first time, you need to be giving him this tape, you know, but but either way it goes, you know, the only reason I'm saying that is because um, he who follows this in his young years shall get acres and acres and acres of riches in his older years. Let me repeat. He who follows this in his young years shall get acres and acres of riches in his older years. And this is coming from a guy who's young himself. So I'm so far into the future that I already see my older self with the riches from what I'm working on now. So this is coming from a guy who hadn't even got to where he's going yet. And I'm already confident that this is how it works. But anyway, let me get into this reading. She doesn't really want to be number one. A woman sometimes seems to want to be the most important thing in her man's life. However, if she is the most important thing, then she feels her man has made her the number one priority and is not fully dedicated or directed to divine growth and service. She will feel her man's dependence on her for her hap for his happiness. And this will make her feel smothered in his neediness, smothered by his neediness and clinging. A woman really wants her man to be totally dedicated to his highest purpose and to also love her fully. Although she would never admit it, she wants to feel that her man would be willing to sacrifice their relationship for the sake of his highest purpose, let me repeat. Although she would never admit it, this is woman. She wants to feel that her man would be willing to sacrifice their relationship for the sake of his highest purpose. Continuing on. Imagine that a man must go off to war. He hugs his woman goodbye. She is crying. Please don't go, she begs. You know that I must, he answers. They look at each other deeply in the eyes. You know that I love you, he says to her. Yes, I know. And I also know you must go, she replies. And another gush of tears bursts from her heartbroken face. He turns and walks out the door to his necessary destiny as his woman full of pain and pride watches him disappear this exaggeratingly dramatic scene captures a profound energetic principle although your woman seems to want to be the most important thing in your life she actually can trust and love you more if she is not let me repeat because somebody didn't hear me Somebody need to go get some, um, some cob, some, um, what's that, the, the, um, some Q-tips to clean the ears out. Cause somebody didn't hear me. Let me repeat that. <clears throat> Although your woman seems to want to be the most important thing in your life, she actually can trust and love you more if she is not. A man's highest purpose is his priority not his intimacy. Let me repeat. A man's highest purpose is his priority, not his intimacy. 
A man's highest self is his priority, not his penis. A man's higher self is priority, is his priority, not his lower self. Do you see why do you see why I'm going with that, y'all? Your woman knows this deep inside, she really wants it to be this way. The woman in the scene above would actually feel strange if her man suddenly said, I've changed my mind. You are more important to me than the freedom of mankind. You are the most important thing in my life. And I don't care if my service to humanity is needed elsewhere. So I'm staying here with you. Even though part of her would feel glad, a deeper part of her would feel deflated, emptied. And let down. So let's pause right here real quick. So this backs up what I've been saying to you guys. See a lot of you all are too quick to. Want to run and deal with women. When you are in a point in your life where. You need to be focusing a little bit more on building your dream up. And then dealing with women when you got the time to do that. When you have the money to go do that. If you don't have the money like you need to, you know, pay your little bills and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Keep the little gas in your car like you need to, you know, keep the little groceries in the crib like you need to, you know what I'm saying? Pay the little bills and stuff like that like you need to, you know, once you can kind of get all that secure like you want to get it and, and you are secure as a man, you know what I'm saying? As far as you standing on your two, as far as you standing on your square so you know you straight. You know, and you know, your everyday survival, you know what I'm saying? So you can keep working towards your higher purpose, which is your priority. See, once you have all that straight, then it's real easy to deal with a woman. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to keep it real in the hundred with y'all. And this is some real shit, bro. And I was like, I really don't care how some of y'all niggas feel about this. At the end of the day, like I may come on these tapes and talk about some of these women and the fuckery that they do. But I still don't think that all women are fucked up. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not no homosexual, you know. It's like when I know that some of these women fucked up, I just try to watch out for the ones that's fucked up and I deal with the ones that still are cool, you know. So, you know, niggas like niggas still is going to be like dealing with the women, basically, is what I'm saying. Um, and, um, you know, we but we just got to have like a higher quality of choice, you know, um, and just avoiding the ones that we don't necessarily want to deal with. OK. So that's what it is. It's like we got to have a mentality of, you know, we want to just deal with the, the kind of women that we like and the women that we don't like. We really just don't want to give them the attention. You know, if you come across the shit, you know, you just kind of keep that shit moving. Don't give it no attention. But but really, when you dwell within the type of women you don't like, then that starts making you feel sour about all women and stuff like that. And, and, and me personally, that's just not something that I find to be healthy, you know. So, you know, we, we got to really like watch that. You know what I'm saying? Like. You got to be able to separate the, the bullshit, you know, from the shit that's 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 decent, you know, but. um, But let's get back to what we're saying over here. So going back to this. um, So like it says here that your woman even would feel strange if the if you would have changed your mind and didn't go into the war, like in the example I gave. So. You know, it's like a woman knows that the alpha men are going to be the men that are going to always keep their eye on their, basically their highest purpose and their highest priority. And these are the men that they really want to be with. Okay. But, um, but going back, what I, that's what I was talking about. I was talking about the, um, having your little, your little money and stuff like that straight, you know, and some little gas for the car and stuff like that and all that. Like I said, once you have all that stuff straight as a man, then that means you're going to be comfortable in your own psychology. You know, you're going to know everything at the crib straight you know, you're going to go home to, you know what I'm saying, your, 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 your room clean and stuff like that. You know, you got you some little food in the fridge, fridge and stuff like that. You know, since you got you some little money and stuff, you know, with your little job or whatever that you've been kind of using to help support whatever your ultimate goal is. You know, when you had some little extra change, you went and bought you, let's say, a, a Xbox or something, a new video game. So when you go back to the crib, you got some new shit. So in other words, it's like, you want your whole life to be comfortable prior to you dealing with women. You know what I'm saying? So it's not about you needing money to fuck with women. It's more so you need money so you can fuck with yourself. And then by default, when you deal with the women, like shit can goddamn 
she'll be able to kind of like flow in with what you got going on. You know what I'm saying? So once again, it's like you may find a little female you like and she cool and y'all on some laid back shit. And, and since you got some little money and stuff, you know, you can probably use like 10 or 20 dollars and go get a pizza or something like that. And it ain't, it ain't really no big deal because, you know, because because you, you, you know, you got your little money at the crib and stuff. You know, you already got a little food in the fridge for you. You know, you already paid your little bill. So, you know what I'm saying? You can spend a little twenty dollars or whatever. It ain't, it ain't really no issue, you know. And then at the same time, the woman can get the little benefit. You know, she I guess she can feel appreciated or whatever it is that they be thinking. But the point is, is that as a man, you know, the whole event can be solid when you're dealing with a woman, when you got your shit together and when you focusing on you. But if you keep chasing these women and you keep worrying about every time your dick getting hard, you feel like you need some pussy. Then it's like women really ultimately not going to respect you because women can tell a nigga that that just always feel like, man, you know, I got to just have all the women and man, I need some pussy. It's like they don't really like they look at that guy like he's thirsty and don't really get it. And and therefore, he ain't nobody I really want to talk to like that. You know, I'm going to just keep it 100. I heard some of them say this. So it's not really good looking like that. It's better to look like, you know. You can get it basically whenever you want and you're not sweating it. You know what I'm saying? It's not really a big deal to you. And you're going to focus on the things that are important because getting some pussy is not important because you can get it whenever you want. Those are the, or those are the alpha men that women want to be with. Those are the alpha men that women want to open their legs for. Not niggas that feel like every time his dick get hard or every time some female say that she want to bust it open for him, he just running through everybody. And he's not paying attention to the things that are important in his life. You know what I'm saying? He realizing like, damn, you know, I need to, let's say, um, I don't know. Let's say like I need to save up $30 so I can get some gas, let's say, and fill up the car, you know, fill the tank up or whatever. You know, but instead of fill, saving up the $30, you know, he went in and went and did some funny shit or something like that. Just tricking off with the female or whatever. Went and got a 3 5 or some gas or something, let's say. When bro really should have went and got some, you know, gas for his damn tank. But he went and got the pack and got down just the flex for the female and stuff like that. And see, a lot of you niggas are doing stuff like that. And I know you are. You niggas can't lie to me. You know what I'm saying? I see right. I see. I can see you. niggas. like this is this type of stuff you all do. OK, this is this is what you all do. So you put the women before your destiny, because, see, when you get the gas and put it on your car, that's going to allow you to get to go way back to work. I mean, get you to go to work and come back home every night. You know what I'm saying? So you can keep on paying your bills and keep the food. So that $30 in your gas tank is very, very important. It's way more important than you flexing off of this female. Flexing off of this female is not important. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at it like that. Hell, if you want to, if you want to, once again, and, and have a little, a little, you know, a little hangout session with her or whatever, go ahead and get the $30 in the gas tank. Boom, then you go on to work. Boom, you go on to work. Then when you get your paycheck, you know what I'm saying? Pull like 20 or 30 to the side and, and then have your little fun time with her or whatever. But now you can do it because you still, once again, you you handling your priority. So the point is that the man has to handle his priority. Like other than that, when you fucking with women and stuff like that, that shit gonna always be faulty. Um and, and ultimately like it just ain't gonna work, you know. It, it just ain't gonna work. All right, here we go. If a woman has become the point of your life, you are lost. Let me repeat. If a woman has become the point of your life, you are lost. You have a gift to give, a purpose to fulfill, a deep heart impulse that moves you. If you have lost touch with this impulse, then you will begin to feel ambiguous in your life. You will make decisions because you have to, but they won't be guided by a deeper sense of purpose, a.k.a. a spirit. You may take on your woman's purposes because they are stronger than yours. Let me repeat that shit. You may take on your woman's purposes because they are stronger than yours. How many of you men out there and how many of these men out there are working on their woman's dreams? Not because they want to assist her. But simply because they don't have any of their own. They have no creative mentality. They have no real intelligence. They have no real willpower. Once again, they have no sense of life purpose. No sense of priority. So he willing to help everybody else with their shit because he ain't got nothing going on. That's a sad thing.
And what's real and what's even sadder is, is that a lot of you women actually are seeking and looking out those type of men. You want these beta male men who could um you know play play basically castrated, you know, just walking dicks in your warp reality where you rule everything. That's sick ass dominatrix shit y'all got going on over there. Anyway, you may adapt your need for direction to externally regulated purposes, becoming a cogwheel company man or a dead end husband and parent without leaving yourself open to your own greater vision. Be careful not to deep substitute default responsibilities for true purposes. Let me repeat. Be careful not to substitute default responsibilities for true purpose. It is easy to fill your day with chores and obligations, coming up for air only to only long enough to watch some TV or have quick sex. It's also easy to give up entirely on life, living a life of absolute commitment to truth, settling for the common life of absolute commitment to work, family, intimacy and friends. Yet you can only be a superior professional father, husband and friend. When you are living these relationships as gifts given from you, given from your core, not as what's left over because you don't have the guts. Excuse me. You don't have the guts. Where the fuck am I at? Hold a minute. Here we go. Because you don't have the guts to discover your core impulse and live on its basis. If you are living from your core, giving your fullest gifts, everyone will feel your lack of true purpose. Your kids will challenge your authority. Your colleagues will take advantage of you. Your friends won't expect much of you. Your wife won't trust you. These are the things that happen when you don't live your higher purpose. And you let your dick run your life. Even though she may seem to want to be the center of your life, she doesn't. She wants you to know the center of your life. However, so she can trust you. Even if you go, even if you must go off somewhere without her to fulfill your purpose, like a man going to war. She will be able to trust you and love you as long as your purpose is real and true. Let's see real quick. Basically, we'll start right there. So, ultimately, what that was, what that's talking about is, is that you know, people around you they can tell when you're not really following your life purpose because you seem aimless um, and you seem naked and ashamed. And and I can kind of tell this in people too, you know, when when they when they, you know, they don't really know where they're going in their life, you know, what I'm saying stuff seems kind of um, aimless, you know, and I can understand that feeling, you know, I, I can understand that feeling, but the point is is that you got to always search deeper within yourself and figure out, um, on a more core level, what it is it, what is it that I'm, what, what why am I really here, uh, what what's my real purpose, and and, and you gonna have a lot of alone time, um. To have to figure that out. So that was probably the next part. A lot of people want to figure out. Well how do I figure out my life purpose? And I'll tell you how I figured out mine. I, I always I guess kind of looked at what I naturally did. And stuff like that. What I was good at. you know. But ultimately it came from me being on my own. And it came from me evaluating my own psyche. Evaluating. Um, basically certain things in my past. Um, and evaluating what I was good at, you know, and ultimately I kind of figured out what that was, you know, but the, the key to figuring out what your life purpose is, is you have to be alone. Like you, it's not like a thing where you can be around people or even you can have everything going the way you want to have it going in your life. Sometimes you find your life purpose when shit is fucked up. I mean, that's how it was with me. I, I didn't find my life purpose where the lights were on. I found my life purpose in the darkness. 
and I had to create a light to get out of there because it was it just because I couldn't see, you know. So some people have their life purpose manifested in in peace, and some people have it manifested in chaos, you know. Um, but most of you so-called black men, you know, you're gonna have it manifested in chaos because, um, you know, just like Blackbeard, some of you brothers are also probably on y'all stage are coming up, so. You know, you, you may have um, certain things you probably even are working on, you know, and you may not have everything you want to have in your life. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you may be aspiring to that, you know, and then it may be some of you brothers that may be in a worse position than that. Um, you know, who knows? But the point is that, you know, we all need to be going by this message, which is basically following the life purpose. Um, and, it, and it comes from being on your own, too. You know, like I was talking on the previous take, just getting it out the mud. That and that basically just means, you know, if you hear a nigga say he getting it out the mud, what that means is that, you know, you don't mind basically going through the hard work, you don't mind going through the sacrifice, you don't mind going through the isolation and being alone, you don't mind going through the confusion, you know, you don't mind going through the, the pain, you know, you don't mind going through the failures, you know what I'm saying? You don't mind going through all that to get the success, you know. Because you got to think about it. When people get diamonds and when people get real natural, you know, some resources that are very, very precious, they are very, very rare, that are very, very deep within the earth's core. When the people are going down there to get it, they get very, very dirty. You know what I'm saying? You see the people with the, the power drills and the shovels and all that stuff. You see dirt and a bunch of bunch of just, you know, silt, you know what I'm saying? And they, and they covered in just dirt and stuff like that. So in order to get anything precious, you know what I'm saying, it's going to take some kind of getting dirty involved, you know, and, and that's what it is with this shit. It's going to take the sacrifice. You have to sacrifice your body. You have to sacrifice your resource. You have to sacrifice the, the, the most and the most valuable things you have because that's what your higher self is going to require. It ain't going to require, you know, the shit you got that you don't really care about. Your higher self is going to require the things you value the most as the sacrifice for this shit. So whatever you think you value the most, just imagine yourself giving that up plus some more in order to get whatever it is you think you really want. Are you willing to do that? That's what you should be asking yourself. Are you are you willing to do that? Are you willing to give up the only one thing you got right now or the only one to two, three things you got right now that make you feel good about yourself? Are you willing to give that up in order to get something bigger and better than that? You know, so this is the this is the science to this shit, the way of the superior man. And at the end of the day, you know, the alpha man always is dealing with the alpha woman and the alpha woman always supports her man and what it is he's doing. And the alpha woman is not one to try to tie her man down and make her man feel like um, or even her potential man or the man she's just talking to or communicating with the man she just sleeping with or whatever it is, whatever man that she has her little bond with at that time. Um, she she doesn't want the guy who's going to give up his goal just to follow her. The alpha woman doesn't want that. Um, she wants the man that's going to tell her, no, I can't come over tonight because I got to go to work tomorrow. Or no, I can't come over tomorrow, you know, because I got a test to do. You know, she wants that guy. You know, but a lot of you guys are so, you know, insecure that you you don't even know that. You know, you think that, you know. That these women just want your attention. So what you end up doing is, is you end up giving up your dream. The alpha woman realizes that. She loses respect for you. So now you have chased away the alpha women. So the only ones that are available now are the beta ones. Because you are looking for somebody to give your attention to. Because you've given up your dream. So now the beta ones come in. So now you're fucking beta women. You know what I'm saying? You end up getting one of them pregnant. You've reproduced with a beta, beta female. And now she's just draining you for all your resources, your light and all your attention and spiritual energy. And then you wondering what happened, you know. But this is just a science, man. You know, I just want to drop this on y'all boys. You know, I damn sure wish somebody dropped this shit on me like that. You know, like I said, ain't no telling where I'd be. But, you know, shit, maybe one of y'all young niggas will turn up on this shit. You know, that, that, who knows, you know. What's the boy Blackbeard, man? We're going to turn this one off. I'm out.